Oh, here's a nice piece of jewelry. Okay, let's talk jewelry, Mona. How did you acquire the pin with the butterfly and the pearl? From the thrift store. The thrift store. So you've got this and you said, I'm going to buy that pin, Dr. Lori. No. I'm going to bring it to her. I'm going to see what's what. No, I bought a bag. They had a bag of, like, uh, little necklaces and bracelets. And, and it was about 2 or $3 for the whole bag. The whole bag was 2 or $3. And when I dumped it out, that little pin fell out. I didn't see it in there at first. Oh, so you dumped out that bag and, and a pin fell, and this pin fell out? Yes. Oh, All right, here's what you have. You have an enamel pin, and you have it set in a piece of what's called the base metal. In this particular case, the base metal is copper. So you can kind of see that red copper sign kind of color underneath. And that particular piece tells you a little bit about it. Then it has a seed pearl, which is a very small pearl, right? Now it's a seed pearl that's not allowed to grow in the shell. It's larger. It's a cultured seed pearl. And it is marked on the back, this particular piece, with the class wells, and it says 14 kgf. What does that mean? 14 karat gold filled. That means that the underside of this particular pin is copper, right? Then they dip it in gold, gold fill, right? So the gold on the top and then fill. And then what you have, in fact, is that little seed pearl and this particular clasp and the enamel butterfly as well. Value on the piece is going to be just around $100. Very nice. I go looking for clothing my size Sit on. Large, Sit on. large size women for So you uh, go fish. looking for clothing, you were saying? Yeah. And that came, I believe that came on a blouse that was in a box. All right. This is pretty nice. It's sterling. Sterling. So a couple things I want you to look for when it's jewelry, first of all. So you found this on a piece of old clothing. It's on a blouse. Somebody forgot to take it off the blouse. Happens all the time. The other thing about thrift stores or yard sales or flea markets, look in the pockets. Mm -hmm. You would be surprised at what's in a pocket. I had a woman at this event, I, uh, where was I? I think I was in, I think I was in Indianapolis. I'm not sure where I was, but I was somewhere. And a woman said, I said, where did you get the diamond earring? She said, I bought a pair of pants at a thrift store. I bought the pants for $5. The diamond earrings were worth $5,000 in the pockets of the pants. So, you know, the earrings are hurting you and you took them off and you put them, please. <laughs> so this particular piece is a brooch. It is sterling silver. It's marked sterling on the back. Please look for the marks. I teach you all the marks. 585, 750, 14K, uh, 925. Look at the line. It's all different and they're all right there on the YouTube channel. Subscribe. We'll show you those videos. This particular example here is, in fact, Multiple stones, and these particular stones are cubic zirconias. Uh, fancy word, spinel, right? Yeah. They date to about the 1950. It looks like an aquamarine. It's not an aquamarine. These are Austrian crystals. Fancy word for colored glass. But they're, it's a very nice design. It is in a setting that's worth about $250 just for the setting. So. The entire costume jewelry brooch is worth about $400. It's a beautiful example, and the mark is very clear. You just yes, have to look for it. It's right here underneath this particular pin. Sometimes they'll also have a clasp, a little clasp on the top, and you can wear it as a pendant as well. This one doesn't, which helps us to date it between about 1925 and about 1940. It's really a nice piece. So this looks good because we're starting out with a jewelry box. <laughs> There's a date inside that's the same when Hitler was elected the leader of the Nazi party. It's a German watch with 14 karat gold. All right, let's see. So you bought this at a thrift shop. Mm -hmm. This watch. 29 Canadian dollars. Because we're close to Canada here. So you've got this watch that says it's 14 karat gold and it says 585. Right? Now, understand that there are all different types of marks, 750, 585, 14K. That mean 14 carat. Mm -hmm. So that's what you have here. So now you know you have a gold piece. Now, is the band gold as well? Yeah. And there's another mark that tells you that the band is also gold. 
right? You found that mark as well? Yeah. She's nodding her head and I'm still looking and you're all thinking, why is she still looking? Because I have to be sure. Just because she nods her head doesn't mean it's right, although in this case she's correct. All right, so you've got a 14 karat gold band, a 14 karat gold face. You've got a 14, you've got a 17 jewel watch. You just went from very, very good materials to only a mediocre works. 17 jewels indicates that they put very good materials on a watch that's going to get you there basically on time, not perfect. Right? It's no Patek Philippe. You know, it's no Rolex. It's no Mova. It's, it's basically, eh, we'll get you there. So the works are not that great, but the actual casing of the watch is quite nice. The diamonds here are pave chips, little tiny, nice, but tiny. And value on your watch is all in the gold, about $800 worth of gold. What did you pay at the thrift store? $29. $29. Nice. What about the date inside? The date inside is actually uh, relates to, of course, the maker, but not all that important. In terms of time period, it dates between 1925 and 1945. What is the jewel that she has? Jewels. Let's talk about jewels. So 17 jewels. One second. Um, the jewels relate to this idea where um, you have gears in these watches. So the gears move. And the gears move based on you winding the watch, right? These are watches without a battery. So some of you are not familiar with these types of watches. And basically what happens is the gears move and the gears move. Well, the gears over time will get dirt, condensations on your wrist, sweat, whatever it is. And the gears will move and move and move, but they get gummed up. They get dirty. They, get, they stop. So they put a jewel, an actual jewel. <laughs> Here, let me pick up a jewel for you. An actual jewel, a little tiny piece of a very, very hard stone, a jewel, a gemstone inside, usually a garnet, sometime a ruby. And literally what it will do is it will carve against, the gears will actually carve against those particular hard stones, and it will keep all the gears moving. So it keeps the time well. Jewels relate to accuracy. So the higher the number of jewels, the more accurate the watch. 17 jewels is not that many jewels. 17 jewel watch are usually used, I'm sorry ladies, for women's watches. Where does a 19th century woman have to get to on time? <laughs> kind of thing, right? So basically, usually you'll have a man's watch or a railroad grade watch that has to be synchronized for the, for the locomotives, right? Railroad grade watch might have 23 jewels. I've appraised watches by Patek Philippe with 249 jewels to keep it very, very accurate, to keep everything moving well. So that's the difference. That's a gorgeous buy, $29 Canadian for um, the gold that's going to equate to about $800 in gold. The watch itself is okay, but not great. Yes. It says 17 jewels right on the watch. Right on the watch, it'll say 17 jewels. It'll say that for any number of jewels, right? It actually, it's used, if it's not on the front, it's usually on the back or on the works. Can you speak into the mic, hon, so everybody can hear you? How, how do you make sure if it's, if it's right? How do I make sure it's right? You can go in, I can open the back and count the jewels. You'd actually see the little gemstones. Yeah, it's very easy. Open up the back, and then you can basically count how many jewels are there. I saw 249. It was a $100,000 Patek Philippe, solid gold. Yeah, but the other places that I want you to look when you're looking at watches, I want you to look at the back for the mark. I also want you to look on the actual clasp for the marks because this 585, which means 14 karat gold, talks to you about the, the actual band. This mark talks to you about the case. So you have to look for multiple marks. And it's kind of like on a teacup and a tea and a saucer. You want to make sure the mark on the saucer is the same as the mark on the teacup, that they really are a match. It's the same thing here. You usually won't get a 10-karat gold band on a 14-karat gold watch case. Does that help?